Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Madden 17 Road to Glory. In this episode, I'm just going to start with talking about Man of the Month again. I know I talked about it quite a bit last episode, but this episode I'm going to talk about how useful or why I'm actually waiting for the players, or should I even wait for the new players to come out. Like If you look at the players here, they're 88 rated, and so far, each month the players have gone up one rating per month. So they started at 86, I think. They've gone to 87, 88 now, and next month they'll be 89 when the new man of the month is out. And I'm debating whether to actually wait for the 89 rated players. And you'd think, obviously, it would make sense to wait to get the higher rated players because there'll be better players. But in reality, are any of these players even going to get into my starting lineup? Like the only position I think I could do with is a better left guard, and maybe a better right guard. I mean, Zach Martin is a very good right guard for his price. Um, I do like spending a little bit of coin on the line, but at the moment, the, the better linemen cost about 200,000 each. So I could only get in three really good linemen, and then I'd be out of coins. So I don't think it's worth it in that regard. But players like this, like, for example, if I could get... Ronald Leary, I would, but I can't because he just costs so much. Like if you look at the individual player costs uh, of the Cowboys players, haven't got any bronze. I've only got a few silvers, um, so we'd have to pick up pretty much the forty players. I think we've we've got ten in total. So I'll just look at how much the Cowboys players are and whether it's actually worth picking them up to get him in the team. So I think he's the only left guard in this set of team heroes. And so Cowboys, the gold players are about 1.6k each and I need say roughly 15 of them. So that's, that's let's just round it up to 25k as an example. So it's 25k already just on the golds. Silvers, I think we need five of these guys. So they're reasonably cheap. Uh, a few of them are actually pick them up now they're not usually that cheap um but let's just say these tend to average for around two three k each i'll pick up these guys just because it's coming towards the end of the month i think people are going to like sell them on che uh, cheaper because he's not going to be in sets for very much longer and the cowboys player next month might not be as good i'm not sure who it's going to be i mean i think it could be one of the defensive players but then again you never know. You never know with this sort of stuff. But the team heroes, you could think it's a certain player and it tends to never be them. Like, for example, Theo Riddick did play well for the Lions last month, but I didn't think he deserved the team hero. I think uh, a lineman deserved it. I know a lineman got it the, the month before in Glasgow, but I thought a lineman deserved it again, just because how well the line is doing compared to previous years. For example, Taylor Decker, I think definitely deserved the, the team hero card. But anyway... The bronze players, you need 10 of them. That's 30k right there. So at the moment, that's probably about 65, 70k for a left guard who's 88 rated. And you can pick up Richie Incognito for about 20k, 25k maybe. So to get a big step up from the left guard we've currently got, I'm not sure exactly who it is, um, but he's, he's just 85 rated. He's just one of the bog standard elite ones. But to get a big step up, costs a lot because this 88 rated um leary card isn't a huge step up i don't think from who we've currently got i mean i'll go and look actually just to see how much of a step up it would be and if it would be worth it but personally at the moment i don't think it'll be worth it considering the players we'd have to get rid of the value wise to get him in and he would be untradeable so technically he wouldn't actually be worth anything to me, he'd be worth something in the club, but if I wanted to sell him on or I got a better left guard, he'd be sitting there and he would be useless. So, this is his milestone card, so it is worth a bit more because it has the extra chem. But that's about, I suppose it's about 124k. He looks a fair bit better than Upati, actually, there. Um, he's got a little bit less run block, a lot better pass block, better impact block. I suppose on the whole, it's not a huge upgrade. I mean, the pass block is a really big upgrade. Impact blocking up two, I don't think is massive. Uh, the chem, I don't think I have inside protector or interior protector on anyone else. The Dallas one would help, but I'm not sure whether it's worth getting him in. 
and I only have a few days to decide, so I'll probably wait for the next Cowboy player to come out. But anyway, what I was talking about earlier on with the Team Heroes, is it worth me waiting to get certain players in? Because some players, or some teams, I really don't know enough about to guess who the Team Hero is going to be. So for example, I don't know, the Eagles. Could, I, I, it could be anyone on there. I mean, Nigel Bradham, from what I've heard, did play very well last month or the month before because we were in January these would be the best players from November this month coming around will be the players, best players from December so the month before he did have a very good month but personally I don't know enough about the Eagles to have a guess who it would be at all and even if you do it tends to be someone else so for example like Theo Riddick like I mentioned earlier but is it actually worth waiting I mean this David uh, back I don't even know how to pronounce that back Tiari card it has green bay offense chemistry which is useless for me i don't need a left tackle but i do have the cards to get him in so will the green bay player next month actually be worth waiting for i'd like your guys your guys opinion on this this uh, topic specifically because i don't know i can get this green bay this green bay card now buy the green bay packers cards again next month um because i will be getting some duplicates if i do it all next month and it's 50, 50 items, uh, 50 team hero items. I'll have to do a few duplicates anyway. But is it actually worth getting him? Or I'm, I don't know. I don't know this actually. If you know this, let me know as well. Do you get the collectible for doing the Von Miller? Because that will save a hell of a lot of time and quite a lot of money. Uh, I'll, I'll look into that myself as well. But if you do know, let me know down in the comments section on that. Also. I know it's a bit random point in the video, but if you do enjoy the video and want more stuff like this, more analytical side of the Madden game, drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel. Let me know down below what else you want me to talk about or things like that. It's just the the Team Hero sets confuse me uh, immensely in, in that regard. Like, is it worth getting them? Do you wait? Because you don't know what day they're going to come out as well. Previously, they come out on the Friday of each month. So I'm recording this bit on Tuesday. This might go up on Wednesday. Um, so I'll have to wait a few days to get them anyway and as you can see I'm running out of binder room so I can't actually pick up any more players I think I, I might get one of the players who I have the the players for so like that Carl Klug for example apparently his card is terrible but do I just get him in just to get the collectible as you can see the set expires on the 4th so that's tomorrow for me so hopefully they'll be out Thursday Maybe a day earlier than expected. But is it worth getting him in? He, all he'll do is sit in the club. He'll literally be a useless card for me. Um, with line pusher cam, I don't use that cam whatsoever anyway. So it literally would be useless. Because his block shed and power move and finesse move are just too low. But is it worth waiting? That I'm not sure of. Um, sets in general. The only sets I tend to do at the moment. Which I do really urge you guys to do. Because it really, really does help are the I think it's the redemption sets nope it's one of these burn badges sets uh, I think it's the it's the other one typically the last one I pick on um, what you do get all your team collectibles trade them in to the team item trade section get the badges and just slowly upgrade that's got me so many elite badges over the course of the year. It's saved me about 120k, I think, in total. But what I'll do now, I'll just jump straight into the gameplay. Because obviously you guys do want to see the gameplay. We're working towards our Super Bowl. Um, as you can see from the Seasons tab here, when I go in, team looking fantastic. We have a lot of coins to spend, which I don't know what I'm saving for at the moment. But, you know, I don't want to spend them all, have a market crash and lose all the coins. Um, we need one more win to get the Super Bowl and or one more win to get to the postseason i think it is and we will go from there but as i said hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video but for now we'll jump into some gameplay so guys before jumping into some games i've actually gone forward a day i did the draft video after the last bit and i've i've skipped forward to wednesday now and i've just seen this come on the screen so the new sets that are out it's the prove your well it's, it's prove your picks with the predictor and i haven't actually gone on it yet as you can see this is literally just as i've signed in but i've read a few things on twitter and it seems like the rewards 
aren't the greatest. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to have a look at the sets and see if it's worth doing. I mean, I'm going to do them anyway, but I'll just see how relevant it is or how if you, you actually can make a lot of coin or, or anything of doing these sets. So we're going to the sets. We actually have four items again. Um, I'm presuming because you get given one just to put in straight away. Um, right, so you can trade for a true or false. Uh, so it's just predicting the wins. And you only get 750 coins. I mean, that's not great, to be honest. Um, and the more unlikely something is, you, the more coins you get. Um, I mean, 250 coins on that one, that's absolutely terrible. Uh, Jesus. That's really not good, the coin value on this. Apparently, if you get them all right, though, uh, all, your, all your predictions on that. I don't know if it's every single prediction, but if you get every prediction you do right, you end up getting 50k, which, to be honest, isn't great. I mean, like that, considering you have to, if it is all of them, you have to get 16 by the look of it right. Uh, and the chance of getting 16 off these right is pretty low. So I think they could have made the reward a little bit better considering you have to get all of them right just to get the 50k i mean kelly or mac to get a sack you'd expect that but some of them like lamar miller he could get 100 i mean odds are he won't but he could uh, it's the same with with games like this stafford to have 250 plus passing yards I'd, i i think he will because without Earl Thomas, the, the Seahawks defence really is not as good. Um, Russell Wilson with two plus passing touchdowns. I'd also think that will come in as well. I don't think Richard Sherman will have an interception because I don't think they'll, they won't throw to him enough um, for it to actually happen. I don't think anyway. I mean, they're, they're going to be throwing... I mean, the amount of people Stafford actually does throw to, he doesn't actually throw to the number one receiver which could be Golden Tate or Marvin Jones depending on the day as often and Richard Sherman he'll only stay on one side of the field because he's known for just he's known for not following the best receiver around so that one is debatable all the other ones you know I'll have a look through I'll, I'll, I'll place my picks on them but I don't really think the promo is worth it but what I'll do now I'll, I'll probably play through the solos off camera and then play through some actual games so here we are with our Super Bowl game and we're coming up against someone who's a pretty good team. He's got Brandon Cooks in there who I was very, very worried about because of how fast he is. He He's a lot faster than any of the cornerbacks I have because I don't really have any insane speed corners. And Brandon Cooks, especially with the chems activated, I think he's up to about 93, 94 speed. So I was pretty worried, but we do start on offense and I'm going to run it with Tony Dorsett wherever I can, wherever I think there's a chance to... Get some good yardage on a play. I'm going to run it with him. But you can see, he was wide open here. But I'm just going to roll out with Stafford. Just pick up that first down. Thought I was going to fumble there. Fortunately, we didn't. And one thing I'm going to mention about this game is we do run quite a lot of the same play. And I know I don't like doing that. But since it was a game where I pretty much had to win, I was going to run the ball. I mean, I was going to run the play that was going to work most of the time. Tony Dorsett actually fumbles there. Luckily, recovers it himself. And my opponent, as you can see, he was standing off my receivers so much. That's why I was running the same plays over and over. Because the amount of space he was giving me towards the line or in the flats was unbelievable. As you can see, look how deep all his, um, his corners are playing and all his players are playing. And I'm just going to give it to Rand Whenever Randy Moss is free, I'm going to throw it to him. Or whenever he's one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to throw it to him. Because he just comes down with it so often. And this guy, it wasn't really user him properly, as you can see there. His user him was probably just as bad as mine. So I was abusing that whenever I could. He tended to, uh, to use a lineman more often than not. But whenever he was using a linebacker, as you can see, doing nothing there. Unfortunately, Tony Dorsett fumbles again. Two fumbles on the opening drive. And I was controlling this game up to that point. Not sure how we didn't get a pick there. For some reason, he threw it literally straight to Ray Nitschke, I think that was. And he didn't get a pick. I hope it wasn't Teddy Bruschke, but it could have been. Once again, he, he's he's testing his luck. We do get a fumble there with Bob Sanders, but unfortunately, bounces out of bounds and my opponent keeps the ball. But I know I know I can beat this guy. Just by the way he's playing, like as you can see there, throws it 
straight to Madison, who is going to get that pick. And it's nil-nil, coming into the half. To be honest, it's a very low-scoring game, very tight game. Uh, I've quite a few people open on this play, but I'm just going to throw it to the guy I know who can catch it, which is Dallas Clark over the middle. And we're going to keep... I mean, if he's in this formation, I'm going to keep hurrying it up and just working my way downfield. As you can see, everyone's going to be open at some point on their route, and Dallas Clark somehow nimbly gets around about three people we do get to the one yard line but i mean i bottled it at that point and i had to take the field goal so it's three nothing coming into the second half i know i can stop this guy's offense just like i did before he didn't have anything on offense but he totally changed up his offense in this half as you can see a play action play there very nice play from him he was wide open didn't expect that whatsoever i thought it was going to be an end around run and i gambled on it you can see I'm usering absolutely no one here, as per usual, and he is slowly working his way up the field. Actually, it's not even that slowly. He's working his way up field pretty quickly. It's been a minute, and he's already over halfway up the field, up to my 24-yard line there. And Steve McNair was just picking me apart on this drive. I don't know what, exactly what it was about this drive, but there was nothing I could do to stop my opponent. As you can see, I'm trying to use uh, his first read. He is just making his way downfield. He always has at least two guys open, and I can sort of use a one, one of them, but I can't use a both of them. And on this play, I'm going to send in a heavy blitz, as you can see there. Unfortunately for me, nobody gets through. Everyone gets caught up on the line, and he's just going to run it in with Derek Henry, who I am thinking of picking up, to be honest, because Tony Dorsett just isn't doing it. I mean, two fumbles on his first opening drive. You've got to be better than that, especially if you're 94 overall. And I think his carrying is actually the thing that gets upgraded with the chem, which is quite ironic. I think he has 90-something carrying now. But I know we can score against this guy. I know we haven't yet, but it's just finding the weakness in his defence. He's going coverage every time, and the run isn't working for some reason, which but I really think they need to change that in the game. I mean, if your opponent's going coverage constantly, and they're, they're only sending four people, and you have your five linemen, you should be able to pick up four or five yards a run pretty consistently, especially if everyone is dropping back. Not sure how it how that doesn't happen. Dorset just seemed to keep getting caught on the line, which is why you see me not run the ball very often and just throwing it to the flats as often as I can. But second and two, I'm going to give Dorset another go. Hopefully, he can make a nice game here, and he makes a decent game. I mean, when he actually wasn't getting caught on the line, he was making pretty good yardage on his carries. So he gets us into a good position. I can see X should be wide open somehow, though. Mike Mitchell gets a pick and we know how dangerous Mike Mitchell is on this channel from last year he was one of my favorite players and unfortunately for me he ends up getting a pick but we get the ball straight back there with I think that's Teddy Bruschi who gets yep it is Teddy Bruschi coming up big I mean he's a decent middle linebacker he's not my favorite middle linebacker in the game but he does a pretty good job for us once again thrown to Randy Moss there and finally we get the breakthrough and Kicking a field goal could make the game a tie game if he gets a field goal. Um, sorry, kicking the extra point. But I'm going to go for the fake here. I have Ben Roethlisberger holding it, so I know the guy throwing it is going to have a very good throw on him. Going to roll out. We see the guy wide open. Perfect throw there to Anthony Munoz. And we go four points clear. So my opponent has to score a touchdown. And can he respond? Well, you can see, go over the middle. It's going to get open at some point. I, I couldn't swap to user him, and he gets an instant reply there. Literally, next play, instant reply on me. So he is up by three points. Uh, and I know if I can get a field goal, you know, I can take it to overtime. But I, I'm, I'm pretty confident I can score against this guy. I have three minutes, so I can slowly work my way upfield. And the problem against playing someone who is constantly going coverage is you're not going to get the big plays. It's going to take time to get upfield. But this play here, I can see the right-hand side is going to be open, by the way, as players lined up. I thought I was going to be gone there with Randy. And what I was going to do is I was going to run to about the five-yard line, go down, either take the field goal and tie the game up, take it into overtime, or hopefully get the touchdown and he doesn't have long enough to score himself but that didn't happen we're down to 40 seconds and I need 18 yards Tony Dorsett can't break free there for some reason I mean he just wasn't making any clear runs as you can see there there was a massive hole for some reason he decided to cut in I didn't do that myself and unfortunately he doesn't get the touchdown this player I'm just trying to run it in he thinks I'm gonna go with mesh play I think anyway which is why he's gonna have everyone in coverage once again 
Can't punch it into the end zone. I'm going to give it one more try. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. We kick the field goal. We go into overtime, and we do receive the ball. So the way the offense has been going so far, I was confident in getting a field goal, but I wasn't confident of actually getting a touchdown. So I needed my defense to step up is pretty much what I was thinking at this point. But I'm going to abuse everything that was working against him in the game, and the corner out was working when he wasn't going cover three. And if I can tell it's cover three, I'm not going to go with the corner out. This time, I knew it was cover two or cover four, just by the way the players were lined up. And one of the, the both, I mean, the corner outs were open, but over the middle was also going to be open, just by the way the corner outs were being run by Antonio Brown and Randy Moss. And when you have Jerry Rice and Dallas Clark over the middle, one of them is going to get open. Same here, he tries to adjust to it, but Randy is going to be wide open. And we're in field goal range, so I'm not too nervous at this point. I know, worst case scenario, we kick a field goal and we give him a chance to score but Dallas Clark comes up huge there takes us to the six yard line oh, I just want to punch it into the end zone can Tony Dorsett do it he falls at the one and my opponent jumped a gun on the next play gave us a nice easy quarterback sneak for the win and I was so relieved at that point because it was a very close game didn't really deserve the win but we end up getting it and we end up getting our seven wins to take us to the postseason and just to top it all off, we get a little bit of hate from my opponent there, just because he couldn't handle the loss. I don't think I don't think he deserved the win. I think we did deserve the win in the end, but you know, we'll move on to the postseason in the next video. Hopefully, you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, drop a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys then.